Hi, I'm Phil. In this video, we're going to have a look at the table object in processing. We have all kinds of variables in processing, such as an integer or a float. Our floating point has a decimal point and our integer has no decimal point. But if we want to load in some data, such as our example data, we have to actually work with something that is structured differently. The way we do this is we drag our data file onto our processing sketch. So this lets processing keep its own copy of the data file. So any changes I make to this one here won't be updated until I drag it back in. Once you drag it, your file in, you'll see this message saying one file added to the sketch. There's a few functions we need to learn to start working with our table. So the first is load table. And all you need to do is copy the name of the data file that you added to your sketch. And in this case, we can see that there is what we call a header row. So this row is the row along the top that describes each column. So in this column, there is the average number of steps per minute. Uh, this column here is the day that it is in the week. And here is the, the starting minute for each day. So to tell processing that, we need to add header. So the name of your um, table, your CSV file or an Excel spreadsheet or something like that, then a comma, and then header. And both of these have to be in double quotes. Now we can actually start to use our table. So our data is about how, how much activity someone got during each day. And so we're going to have the number of days, and that's going to be an integer, is going to be equal to the number of rows that we have. I'm going to use the function mytable.getRowCount. So my table is matched to the name of our table here, and we're going to get the row count. And we're going to store that as a, va a variable called number num days or number of days. Now I can use a for loop to start looking at the data. Okay, so if we were to use this for loop just to print out the value of i, we would see that it will count up to six, one less than the number of rows that there are. So there's seven rows. So the day starts from zero, goes up to six. It's not actually reading this column, it's just that um, day happens to start at zero. And this is actually really useful because computers start counting from zero rather than counting from one. So if we think of our table, so we have our header row. So let's just have a look at the day column. And there's also one that was um, steps average per minute. I'm just gonna abbreviate that to steps while I'm writing here. So each row of the data so in order to access the data, we can save it somewhere. So let's have a float called steps. So I've created a variable here and I've named it steps. And it's going to be equal to whatever is on here. So my table is my CSV file that I've loaded. I'm going to get row i. So that is the current row that we're up to, and I'm going to get a float from the column with this heading. And I'm going to print out the number of steps that we have. The reason that this works is because to the computer, as we mentioned before, this row here is row number zero. This row here is row number one, and this row here is row number two, and so on. So when we use our for loop, we start counting i from zero, and i has to be less than, than the number of days. And that currently equals seven. So this goes from zero up to six, so it's one always gonna stop before it gets equal to the number of days. So if it looked for row number seven, we'd actually get an error. The next thing that we will find really useful is to get the maximum value out of a column. So if we want to know what the highest number 
in our average steps per minute is, we can look easily on a on a short CSV, a short data set like this one. But to do that for a larger data set becomes quite difficult. And if we had our minute by minute data, it would be almost impossible. So we can see here that the answer we're expecting is 22. So I'm going to show you how to do that quickly. I'm going to save a float called max average steps. And I'm going to start it off at 0.0. .0. The reason we started at 0.0, .0 is because we're going to compare it to the current row um, value for the steps. So this works, we do this by using the max function. It's pretty simple, all it does is it takes some numbers and it returns the larger of the two numbers. So whichever one of these is going to be bigger will get saved into max average steps. So when i equals 0, it's going to compare. So in the first iteration, our maximum average steps is going to be this row steps compared to 0. Obviously 16 is higher than 0, so we're going to rewrite maximum average steps to being 16.8. So the next time this for loop iterates, it's going to be 16 compared to 18. So our value for maximum average steps will be changed from 16 to 18. Then in the next row, we're going to compare 18 to 17, and it's going to stay the same until it gets to 21. So each time it runs this check, max average steps only ever increases. It'll be 21 and then it'll become 22. And that won't change the last time. So we, we print down here, it will give us the number 22. So here's a few things that we can do with our table. Um, these are things you would only need to do once. So if you're using a draw function, you might have this section here, this for loop inside your setup, and then it will be these values will be saved and you can use them each time without recalculating them. So there we have a few things that you can do with the table object in processing.